Can I get a pound of green beans? What are you guys doing? That romaine. Neil, I'm telling you, you have the best. Every time I come here, it's like I'm in paradise. I need your help. Great. I need some carrots, I need some onion, I need some celery. I'm what making soups. Thinking Sicilian style bread soup. Uh, then we're going to make an onion soup with gorgonzola and prosciutto. And then a beautiful consomme with chicken meatballs. So that I need wonderful. your help. Let's get it going. Sicilian bread soup, also known as Papa al Pomodoro. But I want you to actually see this picture of me and my brother as two little boys asking for Papa al Pomodoro to my mom. Mamma, mamma, voglio la Papa al Pomodoro, voglio la Papa al Pomodoro. My mom just could not resist the two of us. And to this very date, I think from time to time when we both find ourselves in Sicily visiting our mother, we ask for this. This is part of a tradition of Sicilian cooking known as la cucina povera, poor man cooking. Something that I find to be so much more full of character and flavor of some of the more sophisticated recipes recipes that I've come to learn as a chef. I love this particular dish. It's very easy to make. It's done with leftover food and it tastes great. Let's get started first and foremost with the bread. This is leftover bread from the night before. So what I like to do is to cut a couple of slices off. As you can see, I'm not doing any special techniques. Once you get to this point, you cut it in half, then you cut it again the other way. If one piece is bigger than the other, it's not a problem. What we're doing here is not trying to create a beautiful presentation piece. You just want to have pieces of bread that you're going to put into the soup. That's where a lot of people make a mistake. They feel that it has to be looking wonderfully well. It has to be perfect in all the proportions. That, that's not the case. Let's go to the garlic, for example. This is the garlic. You can have it all if you want to. But what I like to do is to cut it in thick slices. These are the slices that I like to cut them as. You can cut this in small pieces. But today, why don't we use it whole? Why do we want to use it whole? One of the great advantages that takes place once you add the garlic whole to the soup is that throughout the process, as the soup continues to cook, the garlic will kind of melt wonderfully into the soup. And it's going to be like little tidbits to it. A little bit of red pepper flakes we're going to add for a bit of spice. Then a little bit of carrots. We go with the onions as well. Then we add celery. These you'll find to be quite common ingredients that we always have in the making of just about any soup. This is already smelling wonderful. At this point, what I like to do is also add a little bit of pepper, salt. And trust me when I tell you this, this is going to be a tomato soup. Tomatoes are naturally a little bit tart. So you'll find that a little bit of sugar goes a long way. Add just a little bit to begin with, then later on we're gonna adjust the flavors, and if you feel you need some more, we'll add a little bit more later. Ah, you can do this with fresh tomatoes. If you're gardeners and you have fresh tomatoes at home, this is a moment for you to add the fresh tomatoes that you will have peeled. But a great addition that I like is to actually use Italian style pomidori pelati, which means peeled tomatoes. Now, these tomatoes, I have strained. I still have the juice that I saved that I'm going to use and add in just a moment. But first, when we get to this point, I want to break the tomatoes into the ingredients. And I'm going to use the back of the spoon as we cook. The tomatoes are nicely broken down. Next thing we're going to do is add a little bit of fresh basil to this. Basil always brings a fabulous flavor. And then the water in which the tomatoes were packed, this water is full of flavor. Ah, look at that. It's already looking like a tomato sauce. This is the point to which we start adding the bread. We're going to add the bread. And remember this. This is a soup that needs to be loved. The soup needs to be loved because you need to stir continuously until the bread falls apart. But together with this, this is the last addition of what we want to make. I like to add chicken stock. If you want to keep this completely vegetarian type of a dish, you can do this with vegetarian stock. It will work just as well. 
All the ingredients are in here. Once you bring this to a boil, I want you to reduce it down to a simmer. And once you reduce it down to a simmer, I want you to cook it for about an hour and a half, stirring every 15 minutes. Stirring is very important because what you want to avoid is for the bread to go to the bottom and start burning. So the continuous stirring ensures a wonderful, smooth soup. This is what I love about la pappa al pomodoro, the Sicilian bread soup. The bread has completely broken down. As it's broken down, it's also plumped up at the same time, absorbing all the liquids that are in the soup. The tomato juice, the chicken stock, and all the flavors that have reduced in volume over this period of time, it really thickened up. This soup is ready to go, it's fabulous. So let me show you how to actually serve this because it's like a cream. Here we go. Guarda che bella. Viva la pappa al pomodoro. Viva la pappa al pomodoro, which means the pappa al pomodoro, the Sicilian bread soup, is the best. You could serve it exactly like this. But me, I like to add a few more things. One of the things that I like is a little bit of chopped greens on top. Could be basil, parsley, whatever you like. This is more for decoration. This, however, is the part that I love the most because this one is for flavor. I like to add Romano cheese, grated Romano cheese. My wife, on the other hand, only like Parmesan cheese. And then, when it comes to the last finishing touch, I always like good extra virgin olive oil. At home, I have my Uncle Michele extra virgin olive oil. That's what I add. But trust me, it's a smooth, wonderful taste with every bite that you take. When you have the softness of the bread that is now turned into a cream-like state, and then you can taste the cheese that we sprinkle on top, the extra virgin olive oil, it just brings all these flavors into their own. And there you are. This is a soup that's very easy to make. It tastes fantastic. And being part of the Cucina Povera tradition of us Sicilians reminds me of my youth. But to tell you the truth, it's something that I do because it makes me happy. Have you ever wondered how to slice an onion? Let me show you how. We cut an onion in half, we peeled it, now all that you want to do is hold it down using your knuckles as a guide. This way the blade will go against it and you'll never cut yourself. Slice it into the thickness that you want. And there you go carefully, just like this. And this is how you slice an onion. That's exactly what I was looking for. Interesting. Almonds in olives. Once again, we are here at my favorite deli, De Laurenti, inside the Seattle's public market. I came here because I need some very special ingredients. I need some prosciutto. Stay with us. Nick shows us how to prepare onion soup with gorgonzola and prosciutto. Another great rustic soup that I want to share with you is onion soup with gorgonzola and prosciutto. I'm going to make it for you in the rustic style in which I've learned it. Then I'll give you a couple of ideas on how you make it a little bit more elegant if you want to. Olive oil, hot in the pan. To this, we add the sliced onions. If you want to make it more elegant, instead of sliced onions, what you can add is chopped onions. What it will do is give you a little bit of a nicer look, but will it change the flavor? Not at all. When you cook the onions, you want to cook them once that you add them and lower the heat on medium. And you want to cook them for quite some time. Today, you want to add the garlic, which we cut in thick pieces, and then the herbs. We have thyme that we're going to go with, parsley, already chopped, basil, and then the beauty of this is the sage. And then I have my little trick. This is optional. You don't need to do this. But every time I make it, I like to give it some heat. So I add red pepper flakes. Now, when we cook these, you want to make sure that you stir them real well so all the herbs, together with the garlic, mingle together with the onions. Because as the onion cook all the way down, this is the flavor base that will make it perfect for us. I also want to add something very important, and that is prosciutto. Let me show you what we have done. Prosciutto is a specific kind of Italian ham. It's basically air cured, and we're going to chop it. I want to show you the technique that I like to use, because prosciutto is wonderful. 
but to chop it, you want to do something unique. So what I like to do is, once I have the prosciutto laid down like this, I like to roll it like a cigar, just like this. And then the first thing that I like to do after I have it, using a very sharp knife, I make what is referred to as a chiffonade. So this is like a little pinwheel effect that it does have. You get down to this point, then I turn it again, and I cut it in length again, so it gets into small pieces. And then, I like to chop it roughly to make it even thinner. At this point, the prosciutto is another addition to the flavor base. The prosciutto is extremely important. It adds a little bit more of salt, but it adds the wonderful taste of pork that really makes this a fantastic, fantastic soup. You want to cook these onions until they are completely wilted and they almost start to brown. The onions have softened wonderfully well, even started to color a little bit. The next thing is a very important addition and I want to share it with you. We have gorgonzola cheese. In this particular case, there are no substitutes. Gorgonzola is the only way to go. It is a form of blue cheese, but only Italia gorgonzola gives you this flavor. What I want to do at this point is to cook it and do it so that the gorgonzola melts straight into it, almost to create a cream base to it. It's like adding cream, but it's adding cream with a definite flavor profile. And then the next thing that I'm going to do at this point, I'm going to add the marsala. The marsala is a Sicilian style liqueur that's made and based with wine. We have a nice full cup and you want to cook this until it evaporates by half. As you can see, the marsala is now completely reduced. The flavor, the aroma that's coming from this is spectacular. A very important step that I like to do at this point is to add a little bit of flour and stir it because the flour is going to be like a binding agent. At this point, what you want to do is mix it so that none of the pieces of flour forms clumps. This flour, as the liquid evaporates even more, is going to be the binding agent that will give it a certain thickness to the soup. Once we got to this point and most of the flour has been absorbed, then we add our chicken stock. You can add uh, any type of stock that you want. I find the chicken has a wonderful way to marry with all the ingredients without being, how could I say, overtaking the flavor. Actually, it does adapt to the flavors that we have in the base. Once we get to this point, you want to bring this to a boil. After the soup reaches a boil, you want to reduce it to a simmer and cook it for about an hour, an hour and a half at the very most, until the soup reaches the consistency that we're looking for. I must tell you, the soup would be good enough if you just cook it for about a half hour, 45 minutes. But what I like, I like to have the soup reduced for a longer time. When you reduce it for a longer time without a cover on it, it becomes wonderfully thick, exactly as this is. The flavors are multiplied. Now it's time for us to serve it. I have a bowl ready to go. Let me pour it right into the bowl. Look at this. Guarda che bellezza. Guarda come si muove. Eh sì. I have another trick up my sleeve. Let me turn this off so I do not reduce it too much. When you make this at home, for yourself, for your friends, use this little restaurant technique. Always have a cleaning rag next to you. And there it is. Now, do not let the soup be presented to your guest without doing something else. These are little pieces of prosciutto that I crisp in olive oil and then I crackled up. I like to add it because not only adds a great deal of flavor, but also enhances the character. As you bite into it, you feel the crunchiness of it. Like I said to you before, this is done country style. An addition that I want to do to this to finish it up is to actually sprinkle some pieces of gorgonzola cheese right on top, just to add on to it. And then just for the little sake of color, a little bit of sage to finish it up so that these flavors come together. I find the sage and any type of pork go together wonderfully well. If you wanted to make the soup even more elegant, before we get to the stage, you could put it in a food processor and make it into a cream-like state. It will make it prettier, but I find that this country rendition is closer to the original way, and in a certain way, it's the way that I remember it. So, there it is. Onion soup with prosciutto e gorgonzola. This is how you dice an onion. 
Cut the onion in half, peel it, and then make sure that you do not cut this part. This part right here, the root, this is what holds the onion together. This, do not take it off. Using a sharp knife, cut across all the way down to the root in small stripes. Very thin slices, as thin as you want the dice to be once you cut the onion. Then, moving slowly, cut in the middle, all the way down to the end, but not all the way through. Using your hand as a guide and your knuckles, keep the blade away from you and slice all the way down. And all the pieces will fall down as perfect little dice. And this is how you dice an onion. Next, Nick shows us how to prepare chicken soup with meatballs. Trust me, this is magical. Whatever I don't feel right, or whatever my wife doesn't feel right, I make this and it fixes everything immediately. Is it guaranteed for everybody? I don't know, but I'll tell you this. It works for me and it tastes great. So let me show you exactly how to make it. The olive oil is nice and hot. Always we start with a little bit of red pepper flakes. This is optional. If you don't like the spice, you don't need to add it. Then we go with a little bit of carrots. What I've done, I cut the carrots really nice. This is almost known as a brunoise cut. Then we add the onions and garlic, cut thickly. This is very important. What I'm trying to achieve here is to bring all the flavors together, but also maintain a certain rusticity for the soup. This truly enhances it. At this point, we want to add the other elements that are going to bring out the flavor. So obviously, a little bit of salt. Sea salt is what I prefer. You do whatever you like. A little bit of pepper. And then we have the dry spices, sage, oregano, thyme, margarine. You can make your own mix. Ultimately, it depends on what you like. The reason why I like the dry spices is because they toast in this process and they really do bring out the flavor of what this will all be about. Then at this point, I like to add a little bit more of either fresh parsley or fresh basil. Whatever it is that you have on hand, it will work to pick it up from your garden. Then chicken stock, and this is exactly what we want to do. Once you add the chicken stock, you want to bring this to a boil and then to a nice simmer, because in this, eventually, we're going to cook our meatballs. Talking about the meatballs, how do we make it? Let's get this started. I have an interesting technique. This is ground chicken meat. You can use the breast meat if you want to, which is commonly what's mostly available at the store. But if you have a relationship with the butcher, I would propose that you do ask the butcher to get you, instead of the breast, to get you the thigh. The thigh is a little bit more fat to it, and it makes this particular meatball even tastier, in my opinion, and even moister when we cook it. Let's talk about the other ingredients that we're going to add to it. This is bread. This is any kind of bread that you want. What we've done to this particular bread, we cut off the crust, and then we let this bread marinate in some milk. We squeeze the excess milk, and we're going to add this to the chicken uh, uh, ground meat. Why is this important? This is important from many points of view. We're going to bind it together, by the way, with an egg. So we add the egg and a little bit of parsley to give a flavor on the inside. There's no way that you can do this without getting your hands dirty, except the fact that this is the reality of what this is going to be. Why do I use the bread treated in this fashion? You notice that it's very soft at this point, very, very, very wet. You're going to have to work with a certain amount of quickness with this, but also with a light touch. Remember, this particular meatballs, unlike meatballs that you are going to fry, are going to be boiled in a certain way in the hot simmering stock. And as they do, the bread is going to plump up. It's going to expand and pick up all the flavors. What are those flavors? Cheese, lots of cheese. Do not hold back. We're talking Parmigiano. You can put Romano if you want. You can even put uh, provolone if you feel so. And then chopped garlic. A lot of people find the garlic in this fashion may be a little bit too much. So whatever it is that you feel like, add the amount that you want. But I propose that when you do it this way, it has to be already chopped. And the finer you mince it, the finer you chop, the better it is. Another option that you could do, if you feel like, is to actually add some finely minced onion. It's elements of layers of flavors that pop in inside these meatballs that as you cook them into the uh, stock that we have right now simmering on the side brings out a wonderful amount. Then at this point, what I want you to do is to be patient. A lot of people think, oh, it sticks, it sticks. It does stick. That's the way that it is. 
but you want to be gentle, move kindly. And the thing about this meatball is that it's very, very light, but as soon as the heat attacks it from all sides, it makes set cook, boom, immediately. So the outside will harden up, but the inside will be soft, light as a feather. We have some of them that we made here in here already. So I have the simmery stock in here. Here's the one that I made. I'm gonna add it right now. And now we're gonna add the other ones in there as well. And you're gonna let this cook until the meatballs cook all the way through. And when I say all the way through, when it comes to chicken, you do not want to improvise. You do not want to get to the point in which the chicken is medium or medium rare. You might wanna do that for a steak, but never for chicken. This will take anywhere between 30 to 45 minutes. And you don't wanna do it on a hot rolling boil. You wanna put it in a nice simmer, you wanna stir about and take them out, test them, and make sure that they're perfectly cooked. The soup is now finished. The meatballs have cooked perfectly. And as you can see here they are. What I love about it is how little they are. For those of you watching this at home, if you should say, for example, come with me, I wanna show you how to plate this as well. If you, for example, would like the bigger meatballs, and sometimes when I make it myself, I put bigger meatballs in there because they're also more fun. But these can be easily broken with a spoon and then taken in. I, I, have, to, I have to share with you a, a small touching story. My wife was not feeling well this one time. She had oral surgery. She was really, really, really hurting. And I said, honey, what do you feel like eating? She says, I don't want anything. I said, honey, what if I make you some chicken meatballs? Chicken meatballs? <gasps> She picks up that smile. You know when you have your kids at home and they don't feel well and you would do anything in the world possible to make sure that they feel great. This is the, my go-to soup that I do for my wife when we, she doesn't feel well, for myself when I don't feel well. But more importantly than that, this is my go-to soup that I do when I want to have something comforting, something that just makes me feel great. Couple of other things that I like to do, just to add colors, a little bit of parsley. It really doesn't add an enormous amount of flavor at this point, but it's just for color. And then cheese. To me, cheese on top of it is just something spectacular. So here it is. This is for you. I'm gonna fix a bowl for me because I like it and I got to have something. Do you remember the story that I told you at the beginning of the show when I told you about the challenge that I had with my mother when she cooked with this broken down pots and pans, which are the same pots and pans that she used to have uh, when Mario, my brother, and I were growing up in a little home in Sicily. And I had given her all these incredible pots and pans that I brought from America, the best of the best. Well, what ended up, it was a challenge that I made with the whole family. Everybody was involved. And I wanted to show off in front of everybody to make sure that my mom would understand how great I was. Turned out that my food looked beautiful, fantastic, perfect, something out of a cookbook. Hers was all over the place, but it tasted so much better than mine. Mama, I must admit to everybody in front of the world that you still cook better than me. Love you all, I'll see you next time, and thank you for choosing to spend time with me. It was an honor. This is my soup. Arrivederci. Che buona. Mm. To make tomato sauce, we start by blending your favorite brand of Italian-style peeled tomatoes in a blender. Add extra virgin olive oil to your favorite saucepan. Add a pinch of red pepper flakes. Add some pieces of thickly sliced garlic. Cook it less than a minute, just so that it starts to brown. Then, add a little bit of chopped white onions. Add some fresh basil, reduce the heat to medium, and let it cook, stirring well, for about three to four minutes until the onions become translucent. Ah, that smells great. I love it. Salt, some pepper, and just a little pinch of sugar, too. 
we add the tomatoes that we blended before. Use the spoon to break the fall so it will not splash back. Stir well, bring this to a boil. Once it reaches a boil, lower the heat down to a simmer and cook it on a simmer for 35, 40 minutes until it becomes sauce consistency. Before you place it in the refrigerator, make sure that the sauce comes down to room temperature. This is how you make tomato sauce.